Hey, good morning. So I'm going to be reading you guys some of these passages. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to all of them, but at least a couple because I'm kind of running out of time. I'm actually heading downstairs here at the high school to help uh, bag um, food for for the school. So let's see here. Historical background, the fight for women's right to vote. This is one of my uh, favorite um, things to talk about, the women's right to vote. And actually, I went to uh, the the Women's National Historic Museum over the summer in, um, oh, I can't think of where it is. It's in New York City, though, or it's, it's in New York. So let's look at this. Up here, we have some of the ladies that uh, we can be talking about. And I want you to, to notice Alice Paul here because she's the lady that's going to be depicted in a video that I am going to post later. So the women's suffrage movement has suffered after the passage of the 15th Amendment. Okay, so the 15th Amendment, you guys remember the 15th Amendment as giving um, African-American males the right to vote. So a lot of people thought this was a time that it should have been pushed that women and African Americans get the right to vote. So the women kind of split um, on the 15th Amendment. While the 15th Amendment had granted the right to vote for African American men, women of all races were still denied the right to vote. Discussions among women's rights leader over the passage of that amendment led to the division of the ranks. Division of the ranks basically means that um, half the women decide, yeah, we can we can support the 15th Amendment because anyone getting the right to vote is important. And then the other half saying, hey, if it doesn't include women, it's not for us. So Elizabeth Katie Stanton, this lady right here, Susan B. Anthony, who surely you have heard about, were of the viewpoint that women should have earned the right to vote at the same time. So it's at the same time of the 15th Amendment, which, you know, is back in Reconstruction times. And they often used racist language to argue the point. By comparison, Lucy Stone, this lady right here, a fellow leader and abolitionist, supported the passage of the 15th Amendment, believing that it led the country in the right direction. Stone would go on to form her own organization, and the two groups would remain at odds for over 20 years. So why did women's rights groups separate after the passage of the 15th Amendment, we discussed because um, some of them thought, hey, if we support African Americans and get them the right to vote now, then we can tackle women. And some of them thought, hey, if it doesn't include both, let's not uh, even consider it. Let's push down here to the next one. The formation of the National Women the National American Women's Suffrage Association, NASA, saw the reunion of the two groups in 1980. The two groups they're talking about, okay, so the two groups that um, really were, were divided. The major goal of this organization was to push for the women's right to vote state to state. So not a federal, not a United States, every woman gets to vote, but a state to state. Carrie Chapman Catt took over the organization in 1900. The Nassau gradually achieved some success as 17 states granted the right to vote by 1918. So 102 years ago. Catt's strategy was to attract wealthy women to the suffrage movement. Because you're thinking 1918, who has uh, power? Obviously, it's going to be the rich. And who lives with the rich men and powerful men of the world? Um, their, their rich wives do. So they could donate their money and time to help the movement grow. Plus, they're going to be more powerful than some of the, the less wealthy people. During the era of women's rights movement, Leaders generally stayed away from more controversial issues like racial equality or direct forms of protest. The progressive era, which is the era that we are discussing right now, the progressive era, proved a surge of energy to the women's movement and women's suffrage, which was among the list of progressive goals. Now, I know we have talked about the word suffrage before. Okay, 
The word suffrage does not mean to suffer. It is not a bad word. It is the right to vote. Okay, it's the right to vote. So what types of goals did Katie uh, Chapman Cat have as a leader of NASA? Um, we're going to push these states. Now, the reason they're going to go state by state is because once you get a majority of states that, that legalize something, even though it's illegal in the federal government, um, it's a lot easier to pass that federal legislation. So Colorado, who gives women the right to vote, once it comes time to sign federal legislation over the right to vote, they're like, hey, we already have it in our state. Let's just sign off. So it might be easier to go one by one and get people to do it rather than attack the whole as a nation. Okay, I think I have time to do one more of these or maybe two. Um the National Women's Party, a different organization, okay, not the NASA, but a different organization. The National Women's Party was formed by Lucy Burns and Alice Paul. There's that Alice Paul again that's going to pop up in that video that I'm going to show you guys. The two women disagreed with NASA over their method of achieving women's suffrage. So NASA wants to go state by state. And they disagreed with the tactics of NASA had utilized to achieve the end result. Okay, so what's the end result? Women getting the right to vote. Instead of passing suffrage state by state, these women decided to prioritize passage of an amendment to the Constitution. So their idea is, man, it's going to take way too long to go state by state. It is only chipping away a tiny bit of the stone at a time. So they are going right to the source. Let's change the Constitution. Let's make an amendment guaranteeing women the right to vote. Paul and Burns took a more direct approach in the protests they designed. One of the first events they organized was a parade in Washington, D.C. Okay, so when you guys get to the next part of women's suffrage stuff that we're going to do, we're going to look at a lot of pictures. And a lot of those are of these parades, especially Washington, D.C. on March 3rd. The day before Woodrow Wilson's inauguration. Okay, so that is not a coincidence. We're going to do it right before the president becomes president. Records show that the parade included five to 8,000 women. Black women were discouraged from participating in the parade alongside white women. And Paul suggested segregating them to the back of the parade. So as progressive as these women are, as progressive as, hey, we need to band together for the women's right to vote that we have never gotten. There's still that underlying racism in America. Ida B. Wells refused to be segregated and instead marched with Illinois suffragists. The parade met with heckling, taunting, and outright assault. Outright assault. Violence, okay? We're going to see violence in the women's right to vote. Um, people were, were angry about this. How dare the women want the right to vote? That's a, a man's place in politics, a man's place to lead the country. Women shouldn't have that right. The women were trapped by the crowd and could not escape, and over 100 women were injured. So how did Lucy Burns and Alice Paul change the direction of women's rights movement? They're going to focus less on the state by state and more so on the um, whole amendment to the Constitution. Okay, so that is half, nope, if that is three of the five, and hopefully I will be able to make another video. I don't know if I'm going to make it back to my classroom, but surely I could uh, at least read it to you guys and, um, and you know, tell you what to highlight or read it to you guys and, and discuss it. So there you go.